Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. So Gavin here. I hope you're having a, a good start to the day. In today's show, I want to talk to you about fat loss plateaus and what you can do about them, what to look for. Is it really a plateau? And all that shenanigans, okay? So before we get into all that, so give me a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. And of course, like and share this video. It'll help me get this video and this content out to more people so I can help more people and you'll get a pat on the back for, for helping them out as well. So today's show, episode number 24, Fat Loss Plateaus. So what can we do? And I guess I wanted to do this, this topic today because over the last uh, couple of weeks, um, and every so often we have uh, you know, people that follow my stuff they hit a little plateau and uh, they they tend to be doing well, or at least we think we're doing well. Uh, diet's good, exercising, and you hop on the scales and it's not moving. You're like, okay, what's going on? What's happening here? So I want to delve into that because I'm sure you've been there as, a, as many, many other people have been there as well. So let's delve into that. So I'm your host, Gavin, and this is the Health is Wealth Show. And as I say, if you're watching live, say hello. Don't be shy. Give me a little thumbs up to let me know that you're on here. And uh, let me know, have you hit a fat loss plateau? Are you going good? Are you on the ball? Have you uh, been good with your diet and your exercise, hopped on the scale, and there's no movement? So what do you reckon? Yes or no? I'm sure it's going to be a yes. So first off, what can we do? So it's a case of looking back over the previous week or two even three weeks to a certain degree and looking and, and being honest with ourselves, looking at our consistency. So has the diet been good? Have I been good for the week? But well, the weekend's been a bit iffy because you may be undoing your good work during the week with the weekend's shenanigans, if you like. How's your sleep been? Have you been drinking enough water? Are you, have you been stressed? Have you been getting as much exercise as you normally would? So those are the first things to look for. And it helps if you're keeping track of those things. So with a diary, putting in your, your workouts, you can, you know, your Fitbit will track your, your workouts, your steps, all that sort of stuff. You can track your food, which is often something that I recommend if you've hit a plateau to see what's going on. Are you eating too many calories? Are you eating too fewer calories? Because a lot of people out there, and this is not uncommon, sometimes if you're eating too fewer calories, which women definitely have a tendency to do, trying to lose weight so they lower the calories they get some initial weight loss from that and then things start to slow down and they go lower on the calories and then lower and try and try and do that way well that can mess up your metabolism and we don't want to do that so i'll jump into that in a moment to to figure out what your what your maintenance calorie intake would be and to see where you are now i've got to say i hate counting calories i despise it i don't recommend it but if you hit a true plateau, a true weight loss plateau, it sometimes helps to look at the calories. So find out what your maintenance calorie intake should be. That's just the amount of calories you need to maintain your current weight. So figure that out and then track for a couple of days. So a couple of days during the week and then do the weekends as well. So use something like MyFitnessPal to see what your food intake, and it's gonna be a little bit ballpark, um, but it'll give you a good idea of where you are. So two days during the week and two days in the weekend, because often they're very different days, okay? So do that to begin with, okay? And then we want to look at these calories. So I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna show you what we'd, what we'd wanna do when we look at the calories. So we have two calculations that we wanna look at. So the basal metabolic rate and the maintenance level. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Let me bring this up. Let me see if I can do this on here. Bosh. So. You should see Margaret Mug in the corner now and uh, my screen. So I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to go to Calorie Maintenance Calculator. And one I often use is this Omni one. So we can see down here. So I'm going to click on this, bring it up, and we can see we've got Maintenance Calorie Calculator. There's some uh, bump down here, some, some spiel that you can read about. Um, why it's important to know what your maintenance calorie intake, and this will change, by the way, as you lose weight. So some people lose weight initially. They've uh, cleaned up their diet, they've reduced their calories perhaps by cutting out snacks or doing some form of intermittent fasting, and then their weight will change. Say you lose five pounds, the calorie 
intake for your maintenance level isn't going to change much. Let's say you've lost 10, 20 pounds, then it's going to really make a difference as to what your maintenance level is. So there's two ones that we want to look at here. So it's the maintenance calorie intake, but I'm also going to come down here and we've got the BMRs. This is your basal metabolic rate. I'm going to open this in a, a different window and I'll show you the difference. So your basal metabolic rate is just your resting rate. Okay, so that's basically doing nothing. So 24 hours of just lying there in bed. That's just your current function. So the amount of calories it takes to keep your body going. So as you say, I've already been in, in here earlier. Let me have a look here. So I've got, so female 5'2", I'm gonna put 168 pounds in here because I was talking to one of my ladies the other day and we were wanting to know if she's eating too many calories or too few calories. And this is what I suggested that we do. We have a look to see what's going on, to find out what the maintenance level is and is she eating too low or too much? So age wise, 64. And what I often tell people to do is here in terms of exercise, do both. So we've got little to no exercise or we've got light exercise. Often these, uh, the, even your Fitbit, um, these, these gizmos and gadgets that track your, your calorie burn are often way off the mark. So I tend to go, I right, choose light or no exercise to see where we're at. And we can see our, our maintenance level for somebody that's five foot two, 168 pounds, 64 years old is roughly around 1500 calories. Okay, so that's a good start. We know where we're at. Now we can add in more exercise. So if someone's a bit more active, then we can add up there. So let's say you exercise two or three times a week. So on those days, your maintenance level will be a couple of thousand calories. But I tend to think it's better to go with no exercise so you know exactly where you are because we don't exercise every day. We're not active every day. So that is your starting point. Okay, so depending on how much we you have, that can be up or down. So it is a ballpark figure, but that will give you a good guideline of where you are. Now, if you go too far under this, you, you'll be okay for maybe a week or a couple of weeks, but then there is a hormone called leptin that will hop out and uh, cause you trouble. It will slow down your metabolism. It will increase your hunger hormone and tell you to eat more and you feel hungry. Okay, so if you go too low, if you lowball it too often or for a sustained amount of time, then that's going to cause you issues in the long run. So we often talk about having a cheat day or a refeed, refeed day to help bump those calories up to keep your metabolism happy, especially that hormone called leptin. I get to keep things tickety-boo, as I would say. I see Bonnie. Morning, Bonnie. So I hope you're well. And um, I want to show you what the, the difference is with the basal metabolic rate. So this is the bare minimum, really. So again, I'm going to put in the same figures that we had here. So 5'2", 64, female. And where are we here? So let me go 168, current weight here. And so we've got to roughly around 1300. That's your basal metabolic rate. So that's just doing absolutely nothing, lying in bed all day doing nothing. So that is the bare minimum. So if you go too low under that for a sustained amount of hit or sustained amount of time, then that can cause issues. So I rec always recommend to bump up the calories you know, this is why I sometimes recommend having the weekend as a, as a, a bit more, of a, I don't know, a bit more flexible, a bit more of a free day. Some people can have their free day or a cheat day on the weekend where they're a bit more relaxed on the carbs, the calories. And there's a dirty cheat and there's the clean cheat. But we want to make sure if we are going low calorie, that we bump up those calories at least one day a week. OK, that's really going to help. So this is where we look. OK. And what I also tend to do if, if you're counting calories, if you if you do that, it's a ball ache, it's a chore. Um, so I prefer to do one or two fasts in a week. So an intermittent fast for 16 to 18 hours on a Monday or Friday to create those big calorie deficits. So this is done as a daily thing, but you can time this by seven to get your calorie intake across the week, your maintenance level across the week. And ideally, wait, what can we say? 20% you know, lower each time would, would do the job. If you're hitting a plateau, don't go too far past that um, but that's a good starting point so you can see whether you're too low under it or whether you're way above the, your your maintenance level okay so have a look at that work that out for yourself and see where you're at and if you're there or thereabouts you know if you're say a couple of hundred 300 calories under your maintenance level you should be okay 
but you still will need those those refeed days to bump it up or perhaps you're just going crazy on the weekend and you're undoing all the good work so that is what i would look at if your sleep has been good your exercise has been good you're not stressed you're, re you're reducing your stress you're, you're hydrated and uh, your diet is, is pretty good on the whole that is when i would look at working out what your maintenance calorie intake should be or the and whether you're too low or too high okay but for most people let's be honest most people the diet is not good they're not exercising anywhere near enough not getting enough sleep stressed out partly from eating the wrong types of food not getting the sleep and uh, let me bring me back up on here properly so you can actually see me so my my screen's being funny now i can't get back to where i want to be now I've just gone iffy altogether. So it looks like my screen has gone completely funny here. I don't know why. But hopefully you can still see and hear me because uh, I, I, <laughs> I can't see me now. Uh, my screen is doing something funny. But that is what I would do. So first off, get your sleep in check. Then get your diet in play. Let me get off this. I'm trying to get off this. There we are. Now we're back in place now. So Dawn's hopping in here as well. Hey Dawn, good to see you. Debbie, great to see you. Good. Good. I'm, I'm glad I'm still with you. So I've got it back. So that is what I would do. Lucky sleep, exercise, stress, diet, water intake. If that's good, then we look at the maintenance calorie intake, figure out where that is, track your calories over a couple of days, two, three, four days, two days in, in the week, two days on the weekend, and see where we're at, how it compares, and then adjust from there okay that is what we need to do from from then on and if you're pretty much just under your your maintenance calorie intake and then it's start to question right what else is going on is there a hormone imbalance is there something else that's going on and uh, that may require some testing but what i would say to add to this is you have to be patient okay if you've only just started cleaning up your diet sorting out your stress your sleep you know, three or four weeks is a drop in the ocean. Say you've been trying to lose this weight for, for years. You know, you've been on so many different diets, you can't even remember them all. Okay. Patience. Baby steps, as I always say. You know, look at those habits. Get to bed at the right time. Cutting out snacking in the evenings. Exercise, daily exercise. Stress, cutting back on, on those things. Get those things in place. Work on that over the two or three months and see where you lie after those months okay so it's very easy to to you know hop on the scales each week and think oh well, this is no good i'm getting disheartened and putting all this good effort in but you're trying to do years of bad habits for for the most part okay and so it's going to take a little bit of time so you've got to be patient be consistent and don't give up okay you've got to tell your body who's boss and it you know once you get these things in check especially the habits, the good habits, and trying to undo the bad habits that you've been doing for God knows how long, there will come a point where your body has to take it seriously and think, oh, okay, you know, this lady's for real. We need to get on this. We need to get rid of some of this excess fat. We need to start getting stronger, start getting more toned, and then the results will follow, okay? So that is my take on fat loss plateaus. Work with that. How many people have we got in here at the moment? I can see there's so many comments popping up. So we have... I see, I see Debbie, I see, I see Dawn. Yeah, thank you for letting me know that. I did disappear for a second on my screen. So thanks for letting me know. And uh, Denise is hopping in as well. So good to see you ladies. I'm about to wrap things up. So you may have just caught the end, but uh, definitely get on the replay and check out what to do if you need to work out your maintenance level, your, your basal metabolic rate, all that good stuff to figure out where you may need to adjust your calorie intake, whether you're too low or too high, okay? So if you like that content, make sure you like and share it. And as an announcement, I should have said this at the start, if you haven't done my five day challenge, it's a free challenge over five days, and uh, we're kicking it off again on the 15th of November. So that's a week on Monday. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can do this. We have people from Canada, like Bonnie, uh, America, uh, New Zealand, all over the shop, okay? so. You can jump on board. It doesn't matter what time. And the idea is it's for, for women over 40 that are fed up with the constant dieting and are in need of something that's sustainable. 
Okay, so in terms of diet, exercise, and plugging in those habits that I mentioned there. So sleep, stress, um, exercise, everything. So it's a bit more of a holistic view on, on fat loss and health. So if you need a bit of help and you've been struggling, and I say you want something sustainable without the crazy diets or, or killer workout routines, and then check out this challenge I'm doing. So if you're watching this, stick challenge down below in the comments and I'll send you the registration link. You can check out all the, all the comments from all the ladies that I've done in the past and then I'll see where it's for you. All right, so I'm gonna shoot off. I'm gonna go and have lunch with my lovely wife and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on Monday. So have a great weekend and enjoy yourself. All right, bye for now.